Uh, okay. So, Fernando Prabhu, can you please start reading 4.15? Yes, yeah, sure, Mataji. Evam janatva kirtam karma urvairapi mumukshubhi kuru karmaivat tasmatvam urvai purvataram kirtam Translation. All the liberated souls in ancient times acted with this understanding of my transcendental nature. Therefore, you should perform your duty following in their footsteps. Purport. There are two classes of men. Some of them are full of polluted material things within their hearts and some of them are materially free. Krishna consciousness is equally beneficial for both of these persons. Those who are full of dirty things can take to the line of Krishna consciousness for a gradual cleansing process, following the regulative principles of devotional service. Those who are already cleansed of the impurities may continue to act in the same Krishna consciousness so that others may follow their exemplary activities and thereby be benefited. Foolish persons or neophytes in Krishna consciousness often want to retire from activities without having knowledge of Krishna consciousness. Arjuna's desires to retire from activities on the battlefield was not approved by the Lord. One need only know how to act to retire from the activities of Krishna consciousness and to see aloof making a show of Krishna consciousness is less important than actually engage, engaging in the field of activities for the sake of Krishna. Arjuna is here advised to act in Krishna consciousness, following in the footsteps of the Lord's previous disciples, such as the sun god Vivashvan, as mentioned herein before, the Supreme Lord knows all his past activities, as well as those of persons who act in Krishna consciousness in the past. Therefore, he recommends the, the acts of the Sun God who learned this art from the Lord some millions of years before. All such students of Lord, Krish Lord Krishna are mentioned here as past liberated persons engaged in the discharge of duties allotted by Krishna. All right, so you can understand from this verse, Krishna consciousness is beneficial for everyone. Some people, most people have material desires, so they benefit from Krishna consciousness. They get a little purification, <laughs> right? If they contact Krishna, just like people come to our programs, they may come, when we have material desires, they're a long way from pure devotion, but they come and they take part in the activities. They hear about Krishna and they chant Hare Krishna. So they benefit. It's a little, a few, some pious is getting them some, some benefit, helping them to make some gradual progress. They're not, they're not yet ready to become fully devoted, but still there's no harm in them coming and hearing about Krishna. It's helping them in their future life, next life or something, they can go on, continue. And some people are already in Krishna consciousness. They're already free of material desires. Some of them are, materi are material, materially free. They have no material att attraction. And so Krishna consciousness is... The, there's nothing in their life but Krishna consciousness because they have no interest in the material world. So Prabhupada explains how sometimes people misunderstand Krishna consciousness, that sometimes people want to retire from services without without lo loving service, without loving, without having knowledge of Krishna consciousness. They want to give up their material duties. So prematurely, 
renouncing the material world is not, not encouraged. And Krishna did not encourage Arjuna's desire to renounce either. Krishna wants Arjuna to do his duty. Arjuna is here advised to act in Krishna consciousness. So Krishna consciousness is not about giving up duties, it's about taking on more duties, doing more for Krishna, not doing less, not giving up. Sometimes people are lazy, they just want to avoid doing things, but Krishna consciousness is about taking on more responsibility. Not just thinking about giving up and sitting down and doing nothing. That is not Krishna consciousness. Any questions? No questions? We can go on. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, Four point sixteen. Tanmay Prabhu, do you want to read this? Sure, Mataji. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks. Kim karma, kim akarmeti, kabayopi atra mohita, tatte karma pravaksyami, yajnata janadpa. Mukshaye Subhat. <coughs> Translation. Even the intelligent are bewildered in determining what is action and what is inaction. Now I shall explain you what action is, knowing which you shall be liberated from all misfortune. Parport. Action in Krishna consciousness has to be executed in accord to the examples of previous bona fide devotees. This is recommended in the 15th verse. Why such action should not be independent will be explained in, in the next in the text to follow. To act in Krishna consciousness, one has to follow the leadership of authorized persons who are in the line of disciplic succession as explained in the beginning of this chapter. The system of Krishna consciousness was first narrated to the sun god. The sun god explained it to his son Manu. Manu explained it to his son Ikshvaku. And the system is current on the and the system is current on this earth from the very remote time. Therefore, one has to follow in the footsteps of previous authorities in the line of disciplic succession. Otherwise, even the most intelligent men will be bewildered regarding the standard actions of Krishna con consciousness. For this reason, the Lord decided to instruct Arjuna in Krishna consciousness directly. Because of the direct instruction of the Lord to Arjuna, anyone who follows in the footsteps of Arjuna is certainly not bewildered. It is said that one cannot ascertain the ways of religion simply by imperfect experimental, experimental knowledge. Actually, the principles of religion can only be laid down by the Lord himself. Dharma tu, dharma tu shakshat bhagavat pranitam. No one can manufacture a religious principle by imperfect spe speculation. One must follow in the footsteps of great authorities like Brahma, Shiva, Narada, Manu, the Kumaras, Kapila, Pralada, Bhishma, Shukudev Goswami, Yamaraja, Janaka, and Bali Maharaja. By mental speculation, one cannot ascertain what is religion or self-realization. Therefore, out of causeless mercy to his devotees, the Lord explains directly to Arjuna what action in is and what inaction is. Only action performed in Krishna consciousness can deliver a person from the entanglement of material existence. So this is a very important uh, section here in the fourth chapter. Lord Krishna is explaining to us about action and inaction. Actually, uh, 
there sometimes people misunderstand what is inaction they think inaction means to, you know I, I give up work but actually Lord Krishna has already said no one can be idle not even for a moment maybe you've seen it at home you know with your children you may tell the children just be quiet just sit and don't you know just sit and be quiet how long can they do it for you know young children the, the nature the nature is to be active so we have to understand properly what is action and what is inaction action we, we want to act of course in krishna consciousness and when we act in krishna consciousness then that is actually in action because when we act in krishna consciousness there will be no reactions so someone may think oh i'm going to stop work i'm going to i'm just going to be inactive for a while inactive but you're still going to work you're still going to eat you're going to sleep you're going to walk around and talk you're going to take your phone calls you're going to look at your email do things like that you're still going to be active you, you may say oh, i'm not i'm i'm inactive no but you're still working you still do things so you get you're still engaged there's still some reactions going to come so we have to understand clearly what is action what is the proper action and we should learn to act according to the instructions of the mahajanas and Prabhupada quotes the names of the mahajans right swayambhur narada shambhu kumar kapilo manu pralado janako bismo balir bayasaki bayam and uh, Prabhupada, the, the, the point is we should follow the example of these great devotees, these Mahajans, and follow their example. Mahajano uh, yinagata sapanta. By following the example of the Mahajans, then we'll, under, we'll come to a good destination. So we have to know how to act, who, to, what, what standard of activities to act on. So action should be according to scriptures. If we act against the scriptures, just like somebody may say, you know, I eat everything. So that is that is v karma. You're not going to karma. Karma is actually the results of action. But when we act against the scriptures, then you get vikarma. And vikarma means the, re the reactions of sinful activities. And that will bring us suffering. That will bring us problems in our life. That's the effect of vikarma. There's karma, there's akarma, and vikarma. So vikarma is acts against the scriptures. And karma is where we act according to the scriptures, but for our own benefit. And then there's akarma, where we act for the pleasure of the supreme. So akarma is actually the proper action. And by doing actions for the pleasure of the supreme, then there's no reaction. So it's a difficult point to understand in the beginning as krishna says here even the intelligent are bewildered in determining what is action and what is inaction but if we can understand this point it's very important very helpful for us to progress in krishna consciousness so we can be liberated if you want to be liberated we want to be purified we get purified by following the process there's certain activities certain actions which we have to do which will pur purify us if we act in different ways 
then we don't get purified, we get contaminated, we get more problems, more difficulties in our life. They come on us as the reactions for our past activities. So we have to know how to act. Knowledge is the cause of proper act. If you have proper education, proper knowledge, you know how to act. And we should act for our benefit. But if we don't have proper knowledge, then we will act the wrong way. We act sinful ways and it causes suffering, brings problems to us. So ignorance is the cause of our distress. But Krishna is explaining to us what is proper action. And then when we get proper, the proper guidance from Lord Krishna, then we know how to act how we can avoid, how we can save ourselves from all kinds of distress. All right, any questions? Yes, Prabhu. Guru Maharaj, uh, yeah, sorry, Guru go Ma ahead, Prabhuji. Thank you, Mataji. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I just, it's not a question, I just want to hear again the three different division of karmas, uh, vikarma, akarma, and then also akarma. The karma and the karma. Okay. Karma is where you act according to the scriptures and you're yes. performing karma to get good results, to enjoy the material world. That's called karmic activities. You're acting according to the Vedas and you do some pious activities. You do, you know, you may do some yagya or some charity or chant some mantras like that, so that you get good karma for that. Okay. And that can elevate you, can, can give you prosperity in this life or next life can take you to higher planets as a result of karma. But, and V karma is where you act against the scriptures. You go against the scriptures. You do gambling or intoxication or whatever, you know, meat eating and illicit sex, these things, this is all vikarma. You get, we get punished for these things because we didn't control. So that's called vikarma. And then there's akarma. Akarma is where we're engaged in acts for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. That means actions in Krishna consciousness. That is a karma, no karma, there's no karma. When you act okay. in devotional service, then you don't get any reactions from, from that. That is the meaning of a karma. There's no reactions when you act in Krishna consciousness. Is it okay, Prabhu? It's very clear. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yes, Vaishnavi, you have a question? Uh Yes, Guru Maharaj, wanted to clarify, action is to uh, act, uh, follow the leadership of authorized uh, persons and inaction is akarma, you told. Uh, that is, we don't get any reactions uh, by, by following Krishna consciousness. So both are same, Guru Maharaj, in this verse. No, they are meaning. we're going to hear, I, I didn't explain really yet what is action and what is inaction because it will be explained in the next verse as we go on. I didn't explain really what is action and what is inaction, but certainly we want to act according to the instructions of the Acharyas in Krishna consciousness, follow the Mahajans. Now, some people may think inaction is to stop work, but I pointed out that actually you cannot stop work. The idea yeah. of becoming inactive, that's an illusion. Even the person who you may sit and meditate, how long are you going to sit and meditate for? You're going to again take up activities. You're still breathing. You're still conscious. So there's still some action there, still some activity. I said the soul, no one can be idle, not even for a moment. So what is inaction has to be properly understood. And that will be understood 
that we explain more in the next verse. Okay. Prabhu, uh, who, who are the, the Mahajans, these uh, great authorities? Yeah, the, just... the Mahajans, the 12. Uh, well, the names are mentioned there. Yes. And they're all great souls who give wonderful teachings on devotional service. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, the names are mentioned. We just read it. It's uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they are special great devotees, yes. Yes, they're all great devotees and they all wonderful teachings on the path of bhakti. Yes, yes, yes. Great personalities, huh? Interesting to read their, their life and their stories and yeah. It's yeah. All in Shrima, they're in Srimad Bhagavatam mainly. Mm -hmm. Brahma, Shiva, Narada, the Kamaras, they're all mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Janaka, who is Janaka? Janaka was the father of Mother Sita, who was the wife of Lord Ramachandra. Okay. Now, he would not be mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam hardly, but you would find more about him in Ramayana. Okay. Hmm. And who was Manu? Manu is the father of mankind. He's mentioned. There are several Manus, and one day of Brahma, there's 14 Manus, so they're different Manus. Now, now it's Vivashwata Manu. The first Manu in this day of Brahma was Swayambhuva Manu. Now we're in the day of Vivashwata Manu. So it changes as we go through the day of Brahma. One day of Brahma, of course, is a very long time. So the 14 Manus in one day of Brahma. Manu is the, the father of mankind. Yes. Guru Maharaj, I have a doubt. Yeah. Uh, I know Mahabharat. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, uh, Bhagavad Gita is the auspicious book of uh, Hinduism. Why they are not uh, celebrating uh, Rama, uh, Ramayana as importance of it? Because both teach life, both teach God, both has uh, similar principles. But why Bhagavad Gita is celebrated more compared to Ramayana? Well, Bhagavad Gita is shorter than Ramayana. Bhagavad Gita is only one part, a tiny part of the Mahabharata. Bhagavad Gita contains the ABC of spiritual knowledge. So it's very good for the beginners to learn the Bhagavad Gita. Then you can go on to understand better Ramayana. Right? Oh, okay. You have to begin at the beginning. If you read Ramayana, you don't understand who is God then you won't appreciate Ramayana very much. You don't understand who is God. You don't understand the nature of God. You don't even know who we are. So we have to learn the Bhagavad Gita. We have to learn who is the devotee and who is the demon. So anyway, Ramayana is something, it's something different. It's a, it, it is popular. Lord Rama is worshipped. It's very popular. I don't know. I mean, we don't make a... We're not doing a survey who's more popular. It's not a question of popularity. The Ramayana is read and it is promoted. But at the same time, Bhagavad Gita is also promoted. So there are different books for different people. You know, not everybody is attracted to Krishna. Some people prefer to hear about Lord Rama because Lord Rama was very exemplary in many activities. We say Rama Raja, 
So people like to hear about Lord Ram and how he's very obedient to his father and all of these things. It's very appealing to people to hear Ramayana. But Bhagavad Gita is basic philosophy, spiritual knowledge spoken directly by Krishna. So it's a different thing. It's very different. Ramayana is like Mahabharata. So Bhagavad Gita that's coming out of the Mahabharata. It's a part of the Mahabharata. Okay, Guru Mandaj. Yes. Okay, but will we do one more verse? Yes, Guru Maharaj. 4.17. Nitya, do you want to read this? Okay, Hare Krishna. Karmano ki api bodavyam bodavyam cha vikramanaha akarmanascha bodavyam Gahana Garmano Gatiha. The Hindi consists of action are very hard to understand. Therefore, one should know properly what is action, what action is, what forbidden action is, and what inaction is. Perfect. If one is serious about liberation from material bondage, one has to understand the distinctions between action, inaction, and unauthorized actions. One has to apply oneself to such an analysis of action, reaction, and perverted action because it is very difficult subject matter. To understand Krishna consciousness and action, of action according to its modes, one has to learn one's relationship with the Supreme. That is, one has to one has learned perfectly, know, uh, perfectly knows that every living entity is an eternal servitor of the law and that consequently one has to act in Krishna consciousness. The entire Bhagavad Gita is directed towards this conclusion. Any other conclusions against this consciousness and its atten attendant action or vikarmas, or prohibited actions. To understand all this, one has to associate with the authorities in Krishna consciousness and learn the secret from them. This is as good as learning from the Lord directly. Otherwise, even the most intelligent person will be bewildered. bewildered. Right. So, Actually, the whole thing is not fully discussed yet. We have to go a little further into the next verse as well. But anyway, they're introducing here, Lord Krishna introduces about forbidden action. So he explains there's action and then there's inaction and forbidden action. As I said, karma and vikarma and akarma. Right? Akarma or inaction, inaction occurs when we engage in devotional service. That is actually inaction. Why? Because when we are engaged in devotional service, there's no karmic reaction. You do service for Krishna, you don't get karma. Just like when we offer our food to Krishna, we say it's a karma-free diet, karma-free diet, because we offer to Krishna. Everybody else, they're eating a lot of karma. They're getting a lot of karmic reactions in their food. But when we offer the food to Krishna, it's karma-free. And so that is inaction. But action, action, well, we're acting for what? What is our motivation, our purpose? In doing? Generally, people are active to get results. We want to enjoy. We want some sense gratification. And so people may follow the Vedas. They do some 
They may do some charity, they may do some rituals, they may accept some vow or do some tapasya, right? They want to get some result. That is action. And then prohibited action is where you go against the instruction of the scriptures. All right? Is it clear? Everyone? Yes, Guru Maharaj, it's clear and it's very good to know uh, what is in action. Yeah, it's good. It's important for us to know what is in action. What is that? People think in action, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to be lazy, but still you're going to get karma. In action is where we're actually not going to get karma where we're not generating any karma. So inaction comes about by devotional service. So by doing devotional service, we come to the state of inaction. But when we perform activities for our sense gratification, then that's going to give reaction. And if we go against the Vedas, that will bring us real problems, real difficulty. Will keep us in the material world. So, karma, we do to enjoy the world either in this life or in the next life. And akarma, we do for the pleasure of Krishna. And vikarma, we're doing just for our own self, for our own sense gratification. So I have a clarify, like question, a more of, to find a clarification, it sounds like Guru Maharaj that most of the religion actually preaches about inaction, devotional service. Yes, we want to teach about devotional service, but it's the, the inaction is the result of devotional service. The inaction, it means there's no karma coming. There's no reactions coming upon us for devotional service. Everything else, every you know, work, work for sense, work, we're working, you get karma. It's all karma. Every step, every breath, there's karma. But if you act on behalf of Krishna, then no karma. The example is given. Just like the soldier goes to fight in the war and he's going to fight in the war for his country and he may kill the enemy. He may kill many people. So he's a hero. He gets medals, he gets honors. But if the same man comes home and gets drunk and goes fighting with people and kills people, then it's a big crime and he's put, to, put in jail or hung. It's a different situation, you see. The same business, killing business, but different reaction. One is he's acting on behalf of his country, so there's no karma. He's acting, it's his, his service. So the same way, when we act for Krishna, there's no karmic reaction. Right? Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um... When we when we talk about action uh, karma, like um, I, I I know some uh, some people who work in the supermarket in the in the meat section, you know. So uh, and they can't leave the and they can't leave the job. And how how can how can they dovetail to Krishna consciousness, Maharaj? Very difficult.
He's living in hell, and when he dies, he will go to hell. Okay, so we should stop now and chant Hare Krishna.